Hello, I'm Adriana Slaughter, and today I'm going to be giving you a crash course on women during World War II. In the 1930s, women were commonly found keeping the home and raising the babies while men went out to earn money. However, in 1939, when World War II began, women were left to fill men's jobs. You may recognize my outfit to be from the We Can Do It poster created by J. Howard Miller. However, what people don't realize is that this was not the original Rosie poster or painting. The original Rosie painting was created by Norman Rockwell. He created this painting to model after Michelangelo's Isaiah the Prophet. However, due to copyright restrictions, that was not used for the public as often, which is why we know Miller's poster today as the iconic Rosie the Riveter. What many people also don't realize is that Rosie the Riveter was not one specific person. They made this icon so that people would be wanting to go to the workforce while the men were out and unable to fill their positions. They named her Rosie because at this time, there were many people with the name Rose. With men being off at war, propaganda posters began being made to convince women to fill the positions that the men had left behind. These posters encouraged women to help win the war by doing their part at home to make sure that men had what they needed to fight. Women traded their dresses and aprons for denim and work boots to fill the men's jobs, such as working in airplane factories to make planes for the war. This gave the men in the war the equipment they needed and also allowed the women to make extra money while their husbands were off fighting. 350,000 women served in the U.S. Armed Forces by working as nurses, truck drivers, airplane mechanics, and doing clerical work. Women in the workforce jumped from 27 to 37 percent from 1939 to 1945. We are now going to listen to the experience of a real-life Rosie the Riveter. I'm Ruby Coberly from Glenville, West Virginia, and I am one of the Rosie the Riveters that worked in the defense plants during the Second World War. I went to school and graduated from Glenville High School, two years in college at Glenville State, and uh, then moved to Baltimore. I worked in a couple places there, and finally they were still wanting women to work in the defense plants because all the men had gone to war, so I got a job there as a typist. Uh, going to Baltimore was quite an awakening because I hadn't been in very big cities before then, and it was, it was quite a, a change. Um, I worked at Glendale Martins, and they made several different kinds of airplanes. And uh, I worked in what they called the parts department in my job. They gave us, a lot of us women, they gave us a, a desk, a typewriter, and a chair right out in the, the shop where they were making the spare parts. And my job was to uh, type uh, identifying tags on these and they were put on the different parts of the plane and shipped to wherever they were needed. West Virginia I think has the distinction of providing more service men per capita than any state in the Union and so that leads me to believe there was probably more women from West Virginia that was in the defense plants than any other state. At least there were thousands where I was working and when the war was over and uh, 45, uh, most of the people were going home, and the women were going home to back to where they had been before, keeping house and taking care of the babies and all that. But during the war, they had discovered that they could do other things. And so I think that was the beginning of the women's movement. Because we see today what women are doing, they're doing everything that a man can do, you know. and. Uh, I came home in 45. My son was born in 46. I went to a beauty school in Morgantown, got my license, and uh, had my shop for 51 years. And I retired in 2010. Now I'm just enjoying life. <laughs> She's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory, Rosie. The Riveter keeps the shop look out for sabotage Sitting up there on the fuselage That little friend can do more than a male can do Rosie, 
The Riveter, Rosie has got a boyfriend, Charlie. Charlie, he's a marine. Rosie is protecting Charlie, working overtime on the riveting machine. When they gave her a production knee, she was as proud as a girl could be. There's something true about red, white, and blue about Rosie.